Thank you, Shiva. Yes, we, we're getting a Meepo once again, Fogged. It worked for them the other day. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I've got to agree with Kevin here. I think it's going to work pretty nicely for them here. I, this OG lineup, can it really deal with the Meepo? Prepare for battle. Uh, I mean, it's, it's weird. It's definitely different. I'm curious to see what their kind of approach is. If, like, they want to just play... Try to play super fast around something like, nice. uh, like just teleport around Sumail, trying to set up with kills with Soxa, like triple, yeah, triple, like triple onto this Meepo and just try to kill him over and over again. Ah. But I've seen Topsum when he's played this Venge, he doesn't skill stun, he goes like 0 4 4. Oh, okay, and he did that, I believe, at TI a couple times too. Maybe he'll get like a, like a point or something of it here or there because he has an Earthshaker to rotate. But yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see how they're gonna do it because it does look like a pretty it looks like a very confident Enigma draft. Like they have their, they have the Amber Coddle, they have their Chen Meepo, and then they have a Kunko to boot on top of it to add even more aggression and more defenses for that Meepo. So, yeah, we'll see how OG. I mean, we'll see how they can try to dismantle because it, it just looks. Thirty seconds to. It looks strange from them, but that's like, typical OG looking like a strange lineup. I mean, true, because I, I imagine the majority of people are watching, being like, "What the hell is OG going to do with this lineup?" And then, while well, OG is going to get the chance to show us, we'll, we'll see what they are able to do with this draft against. Uh, what seems to be a very solid Meepo lineup from Nigma. Yeah, we were all hoping for the uh, ET or the Pango, of course, you know, but unfortunately that ET gets banned and they opted to not go for the Pango. I was on board with Sind again, honestly. I was like, I'm pretty sure they're going to pick that the one because that just looks begins. like the strongest Topson style that he likes to play, but yeah, just a different approach. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to really be all eyes on this Topson Ventral Spray. I'm just, I, d I don't know how this hero can be a Meepo, just sort of any stage of the game. Like, like yeah. what it... What is the strength? I mean, I guess you can at least save yourself. You know, if you're getting gone on and surrounded by the Meepo, you swap one of your poor teammates in and say, good luck, buddy. And you get to walk away. But it's... Well, we'll see. As I said, OG has surprised us before in, in ways that we could never have believed to uh, occur. Maybe they'll do it here. Yeah, maybe. I mean. They, they, I mean, they did look super hot in game one. Obviously, things were very different with regards to the draft, but their play was very clean in game one. Yep. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm really curious to see what their what their actual like strategy is for this one. Like what the idea of, of it is, because just looks real difficult. Once that Meepo get if Meepo gets online, like they just like Earthshaker and Underlord, fantastic. But Venge does not contribute a whole lot of anything unless maybe like you swap the Meepo into a bad position. I guess that, but. Ah, but then you, so you swap one yeah, Meepo a, in, and then the rest of the Meepos come pooping exactly, in, and they're you know, like, it's, "Thank it's you for weird. the free initiation." <laughs> exactly. It's, it's. I just feel like oh, it's going to be tough. Courier, we'll see. Oh, Zaxxer, he's Curry got it. Has been there we go. Curry had to oh. start things off for OG. I love that Earthshaker taunt as well. Right on top of his totem. Oh, fish on the two, but I don't really have any damage. Just stopping up a few right, right clicks. Mind control and Curry are going to be more than fine. Very strong lane, you know, Kunko already as tanky as he is, and then with the aura and the headdress from Kuro, it's constant HP regen, mind control's gonna be kept very healthy in that top lane. Yeah, I'd be Dying surprised if I see if attack. I see anybody really die up top. Maybe Kuroki if he gets trapped in some like horrible positioning here or something like that, but yeah, top should be pretty passive. Oh, no. Farm. Bottom is definitely a pretty strong lane. I, I like this lane actually quite a bit here for OG. Okay. Bane is the dom like the king of lanes, and then Underlord is actually super good versus this uh, versus Ember. You have such a good base damage, such a good animation, and Ember is he's pretty squishy. Only three armor early on. You get hit really hard mid. Well, as you try and make a go on We are coming in there, blocking him off with the fish here, but he's able to make the, the moves round. As uh, CS wise, he's, he's continuing to have the, the edge against Topson on the Ooh. first few waves. Toxa, he's stalking this courier, looking at the sword down. He sees it. Oh, it's a, it's beautiful. Amaterasu, goodbye. All right, See you later. a couple of couriers in the first couple of minutes. Yep. Taxa finding a, a nice little bit of a cash bonus for, for OG oh, across control. the map. And he's pretty low. The Fisher is not going to catch him on the right side, though. So Mind Control is able to put the Fairy Fire and walk off. Saxon not quite able to find the angle for the block there. All right, lanes, so though. Look at this. The lanes are at the moment for OG. They are quite solid. Mid, Venge is coming out pretty even at the moment. He's doing that build that I was talking about, just having his 0 2 2 at the moment. And. Yeah, top their last hitting great, and I Mary mentioned that bottom lane Underlord is definitely going to have a fantastic time versus a Coddle Ember. Yeah, yeah, the, the CS is smashing it. 15 and 7 on mid one compared to this 5 and 1 on Miracle. Yeah. 
And this game, I actually see, you know, that other game, he went for that Atos build. And it didn't, it wasn't like he was versus a high mobility hero or anything like that. It was just an Atos. This game, the Atos is definitely awesome. Versus Ember Spirit, it's always going to be good. No tail. I'm going to try and grab. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime they step forward, mid one's got the two points in the Firestorm. You can just lay that down and it pushes Enigma back. And he's got his... Okay, I thought it was Soul Ring being delivered. Not quite yet. Meepo now will start to capitalize on the fact that he's a Meepo. So he'll outfarm Thompson significantly. Because this is going to be the thing. How, how do they slow down the Meepo this game? Who, who's going to be able to start getting in the face of Meepo before he... You know, he's going to poop okay. back over to mids. Going to do what they sh Fisher block. But uh, obviously, yeah, Weeha, he just doesn't care about the right pitch right now. He's got great early game stats. Two Wraith bands, that nine armor. He tops and just barely tickles him as a mid venge uh, at this stage. Then when Nature's Prophet hits six, catch him off guard me with the Wrath of Nature. That might be one of the ways that they can actually try to slow him down. He's pretty tanky, but that might be enough. We see how much damage that last bounce of the Wrath can actually do in most situations. And Sox is giving him full experience. Sox at level one, Sumail approaching level five. So I think that probably is the game plan, that they use that Wrath early on to just capitalize on the lane advantage. Bounties. So he was able to get the, the most of them. GH is heading over, but already we has He's going to be there to secure that one for Nygma as it is. My thrift reward. Two back to mid. Top up. One. What was the item build going to be on this mid bench? Uh, I... Trying to, I think he just... I remember him doing a TI who was just like treads and he just went a bunch of Wraith Bands. I think he went Auras. I can't remember exactly what build it was, but I think he's been doing that in Pup. So top, the mail does get brought down. Finally the first blood. It was my Bit of a slow start five minutes in, but Nigma able to eventually break the silence. And now the rotation from Soxa. He's trying to make something happen down bottom. See with the Fisher. He's holding on to it. Into the root. Oh, Miracle, Miracle. Cannot get out of there. Mid one punch is too hard. Normally, normally. Some moves being made on both sides of the map. And it's both offlaners getting involved in some early action. This is, ooh, I like this from mid one. Are you seeing this one? The. The, uh, the, the, the item build you'll only ever do if there's a Meepo on your team, pretty much, but going for the Ag straight up, Fog. He doesn't have the Meepo on his team either. Oh, wait. Yeah, what, yeah he doesn't. What? I, was like, I, I, was, I was trying to wonder no, what you were talking about. I was, trying, I was trying to theorize why he would get Ags first. I was like, well, mate, it's got a Meep. Anyway, he's not, no, it's a different team. Again, they dive top, though. This time a rotation from Weeha. I think Kuroki actually teleported him up there with the Divine Favor. All right, they like, also find no tail. So, so Falk, then, why, why the Ags? Why rush Ags? Dire structures are fortified. Yeah, maybe he's not going to do it. To make the Venge and then NT just Dire buffer? I'm, I'm I don't, it's not very value, though. Or maybe it is. We'll see. I mean, is that mid one rush in the Ags? is under attack. Okay. Dyer's top tower is under Never seen before. I've never seen an Underlord do this before first item. Not first item. Not no, first definitely time. not. I think never. I've only seen a couple Ags actually like ever. I have like one vivid memory from like Katowice or something. One with like Vici Radiant's playing it or something. It was like a huge game with that one, but I rarely Radiant's see this item picked up. Oh. As they get the sleep on Miracle. Ah, it's the root. Tower is under see if they've got enough damage. Now he's able to step his way out before the second proc of the Pit of Malice is there. He's still got the slight of fish to play around with. No tail trying to dive for him, but not enough damage to kill him off. Those two kills that they got on Sumail are actually pretty massive. He just now hit level six. He's going to pop the Wrath. He wants Miracle. Oh, oh you can do. No tail as well. Going for this area. Keep control of the warding. Radiance middle tower. That, those two moves attack. that they made to shut down Sumail were actually pretty significant because that slow level six now coming out on that NP does reduce a bit of that aggression that OG probably wanted to have. I'm seeing Topsid actually matching the farm of uh, Meepo, by the way, still with this build. The zero, he actually went the one point and stuff, but zero, four, three, and he's actually just going for Mantha, it looks like. He wants to be a right clicker. So he wants okay. to benefit off that Aghanim's Underlord. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting concept. Dyer's middle tower yeah. is under attack. Well, there we go. Kid Awards Kuro, thanks. To find the Chen alone in the jungle and are able to hold on to this top lane, start to push it back out. Now I'm trying to. So 
The Aghanim's Underlord, right? It gives what? It, it's half the, the bonus. Is it half the bonus damage to your teammates? Yes. Now, maybe. I don't know if this works because some of the things don't. If they're in a fight and they kill the Meepo and there's, what, four Meepos around, is that, is he is he going to temporarily get four times the, the bonus damage from a hero dying and then obviously giving half of that to his team in the fight? Or do, does it not work like that with Meepo? Do you only get it as counting as one hero dying? Because if it is more than one, then you can maybe see the logic there. Obviously, that does require you to start the fight by killing the Meepo, which is, that's not an easy thing to do, but maybe, maybe you do get multiple uh, he hero benefits from killing the Meepo. What do you think? Because... Is I think it would only... Hundred percent. Actually, I'm like ninety percent sure it's just the one. Because there's some spells like what well, Undying Decay. It will only ever give you the strength from one yeah, of the meepos. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just. I'm like ninety percent sure it's just I, the one. I think unless it's unless it's. I mean, you never know. I've never seen anyone try it before. So we'll we'll find out. But as I say, we'll yeah. Oh yeah, give it give it. A, what are you doing? Giving it a test or? Radiant's yes. middle tower is under attack. All right, so that's not it. That's not that's not the reason why I was resting. Nice. I was See, I'm, I'm sure trying to find the reason. The plus, yeah, I was pretty sure. I was yeah. like, There's no way you just get to plus 200 damage when they kill a Meepo, you know? I mean, so that makes sense. Yeah, I, I can guarantee you there was a patch in the past where you probably did get uh, a benefit for every Radiant Meepo dying. Maybe it works. Maybe it's a feature. I mean, well, maybe this we'll is see. <laughs> I mean, that would, that would be classic OG, wouldn't it, to find something like that? Yeah. Kuro, getting ran down. Miracle uh, also responding. Got magic missile onto mind control. One stepping over, but the chains holds back Topson. Mind control is able to run away. Obviously, once this all goes down, well, 10 minutes in, 7 to 3, even on the net worth. Um, even just, outpost trade, and yeah. it looks like, what? Is that even bounties as well? Yeah, two for two bounties. So, very even early game at the moment. Soxa now trying to find some time to build a farm. Weeha doesn't want to let this Urshigo get a blink dagger. They have to keep the aggression up to not let Soxa get this, because they do have that hero in particular versus that Meepo, which can be pretty oh. devastating. We are off, yeah, the, the, off the mark here with that initial Earthbind. Soxa just gives it the straight old walk in a straight line, and Weeha won't be able to crack, catch him. God, you got me scared for a second asking that question. I was like, oh. But I, was, I mean, yo, okay. so, so where, where did you get that uh, that info from? Where did you read that? Okay. All right. I mean, I said, I think you're right. There's no way. And there's no way it grants you multiple hero buffs. Well, actually, I mean, there is a way. And that's if it's been overlooked in the code. But, you know, I'm sure that it's not. This is a perfect game. And anyone who says otherwise, I will hunt now. Do not criticize it. We'll see. We'll see. He's, he's, he's very Radiant's halfway onto the axe. Yeah. This downtime is fantastic for OG. Look, Sox is loving this. He's just staying top, getting all this farm for himself. He's going to get a blink dagger at a decent time. And <laughs> they try and catch him before the TP's out, but he's already away. Mind control. Still able to get the connection onto No Tail. Sets up with the X mark into the boat combo. No Tail will fall. So whilst this goes on, we are making as uh, as good as progress onto the E-Plate, as you would hope for. It's got 2200 into the Eagle Song. It's going to be there very shortly. So, so far, nothing being done by OG to, to slow down this Meepo's early game. We are getting all the space that he does expect. But they're getting they're getting a significant oh. farm on their side, right? Their three cores are ah, farming excellent, but Samael is dead. We are able to find a grab on him. I saw him porting up there too. I was like, I wonder why he wants to actually set up on top. Because you have to imagine they want to hunt Soxa, who's been up there for a long time. So that was a bit of a weird location for for me to see some LTP on. <laughs> I'll pause here. I mean, what, what else do we have coming out from OG's lineup in, in terms of answers? I mean, after Topson's done with the Manta, is it just going to be sort of a very sort of standard, you know, all general build of like Manta, BKB, and, and then into some sort of right-click item, do you think? Or, or has I mean, he I would got imagine, something else in so mind? You need, I, I would imagine he needs the BKB, right? Like Meepo yeah, and Ember, they're going to collapse on him. Kunkka's going to throw his boat on him. He needs to get a BKB. And then afterwards, I mean, he could go... He just goes for something like straight butterfly, like straight damage because Meepo can't itemize to really deal with that too well. Just He can just hold his ground with an Underlord aura. Maybe. I'm not sure. 
it's interesting. Like I said, I, the, the game plan from OG, they definitely have something in mind that they want to be able to address this. And right now, it's not looking too bad. It's only one, like we said, only 1k lead for Enigma. Oh, They're going to start ramping up soon. Do you think I've got time to DC and test the Underlord thing in a, in a demo mode? <laughs> I could test it. Here you Oh, nah, they're calling G. I won't, nah. I won't do it. Won't. We'll find out. I said we're going to find out. Mid one's going to have the Ags. He's going to have the Ags soon. It's just 1,500 off having the Agonims. And we'll see how much this investment does do. Obviously, one thing to note, it, it, it is only the temporary damage you share, right? You, the, yes. the, the permanent atrophy bonus, that doesn't get split apart. Obviously, early on, that doesn't really matter. As that's not, it doesn't tend to be that high a number at all. But you know, later on, it's kind of feels it's bad that that doesn't get shared as well. It's still kind of a weird one, though, right? Like, you don't really ever get to the point where it's like, I have plus 200 permanent damage. I'm sharing this to my team. So it's like, it's, you know, sometimes you have, like, plus 30, Dyer's and it's like, what does tower. plus 15 really attack. change in comparison? But whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as I said, OG obviously fit in the strength on it. Because I think a lot of other people look at this game and say, all right, you want someone, like, farming an aura, right? Getting a, a pipe or a, a crimson against the Meepo could, could be very nice, but no one's going to be doing that on OG. Yeah. Soxa. Unable to get the chains on him there. Getting, getting close. Dyer's top the top 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 for, for Nygma. You know, they're, they're already starting to come out. Kuro's got his mech. So, getting ready. As long as he's around, even if Saxa is able to make the jump onto the Meepos, Kuro's very likely between the mech and the hand of God able to, to offset a good amount of that damage and allow Weehard to turn and, and get himself back up to, to good health with the Ransack. Yeah, Dyer's these next few moments are going to be the big one for Nigma. If they can, if they can get a successful team fight, they can really snowball out of control here. Let's see what they try to set up for here with this mech and with this E blade finished. Drum also finished on the Ember too, so they're definitely going to look to start getting pretty aggressive here in the next few moments. Oh, down bottom, they're hunting. We are going to be able to find him with the net as he runs down No Tail, quick with the E blade. As the burst, another kill for, for Weehar, and again, same build as we saw him do the other day. The E-Blade into the then Silver Edge, so you can continue to just hunt and find these pickoffs aggressively. Now over towards the mid they go, Nigma. Very confident in making plays with this Meepo, with Weehar farming the jungle while sticking with the team. Dyer's Look at this, Sumel. He's giving these attack. creeps to Saxa. He's going to have the Blink Dagger finished up now, so they might actually be able to react pretty soon to this aggression coming out from Nigma. This Blink is exactly what they were waiting Dyer's for to actually build the fight. Is under attack. And we'll see if he can, he can catch Weehar off guard. It's, I think it's to say, it's going to be hard, because even if he does land it, it's not going to be that much, I don't, it, you know, it's it, sure if he gets a slam on five, it will look pretty, but it's not going to take this Meepo from 100 to zero it's, it's, when it's just a level one Echo Slam. Dyer's and, uh, you know, Weehar's going to be playing with that in mind. He's, he's very unlikely to be caught with the Meepos on a target and allowing uh, the opportunity for Saxon to get that sort of unless it's Unless it's inside of a Roche Pit, where you're, gonna, you're almost guaranteed to land a pretty good one. And these sure. check creeps are kind of in the area. Okay, he's, he may make it in time. This... Could work out. Sex is able to time it perfectly outside of the pit. No tail jumps out. Sex always oh, got him. And Chris Anderson on a miracle. The hand of God's out. There comes the boat. It's not the blink play that they needed. As Saxa doesn't manage to get the jump, he's dead alongside No Tail. So Mel's gonna fall as well this game. And then we can start to expect to see it go pretty roughly. They do get Top the Meepo. Miracle, Kuro, and GH still alive. Chains, it's something for OG. Swap as well. Thompson trying to get Kuro back in the reach of Midbomb, but the X mark holds back Midbomb. So, okay, it's something. Uh, they do kill the Meepo, and that will stop Nigma from finishing off Roche. Thompson going over towards Mind Control with the Magic Missile. They're still trying to fight here, OG, with just the two of them. But Nigma, they've got the numbers. Can they kill Mind Control? Mind Control pops the one. He's going to be fine. Miracle jumps back out to the side. Thompson oh getting low, but no tell. He's back in with the grip. Oh, They're actually holding this round of pits. The the He's got the Orchid done. They're going to get Miracle. All right. Whoa. Never mind. Oh, Benchport. Push them out of the pit. They're going to be able to step in themselves. And they may just take this Rosha. Kuka's going to buy back. Yeah, we'll buy back as well on Miracle. They do not want to let OG get their it's hands too low. on They this. have to commit. They have to commit for Someone's it. Someone's got to go in. OG's going to get it. Roshan's down. Aegis into the hands of Samael. 
OG they won this fight and now Nick but they're gonna try and fight this GH he's already getting burst though they've lost the keeper of the life the post comes crashing down onto Thompson and Samel will get them Samel's gonna back, be back up for round two with that Aegis Samel cannot TP out of this he tries so a little bit back and forth OG they're able to push Nigma out of the pit they get the roasty Aegis Nigma by back and Nigma will proceed to win the overall engagement but a, a, a little bit of fire there from OG for sure I mean it forced what, two buybacks that's two buybacks buybacks on two cores you removed an Aegis from a Meepo yeah. 10 lineup I mean that's that's pretty big and we got to see the power of Topson just standing and holding his ground un, around that Underlord he's queued up the butterfly now too because I mean, that's kind of what we expected him to do and these two Aghanims is now finished let's see what difference is it actually able to make in these next few moments as they, I mean, their net worth is pretty good, and it's just really that Meepo who's catapulting forward. All right, yeah, let's have, let's have a look at this. I did uh, one thing. I, I, I will be honest, I didn't realize as well with the Agonims, it, it it is quite a a large buff to the duration that you keep the stacks for. So, so you are building up a, a, a very high amount. Attack. Of atrophy aura. Oh, that's a good call, actually. I, you learn something new about these. You, do, I said, well, you, you never see this. You yeah. know, you never, you never buy an ags on Underlord. But it's, yeah, it's up to a hundred seconds. So, you know, you're used to seeing sort of the perma the, the temporary damage that's built up within a minute, which is the the normal standard duration of the max level atrophy aura. So it's an extra forty seconds where where everyone's going to be cleaning up creeps and building that aura. Up. Yeah, there is a lot of creeps, right. and there's a lot of, like, Dice even like the Chen creeps and everything being thrown in inside of inside fights. If mid one survives yeah. with the Venge throughout the fight, they could get real strong. Nigma, they're trying to press forward, though. They actually find mid one. Oh, what? He's going to turn with the pit onto Miracle. Miracle remnanting away. They do try and focus the Underlord first, as mid one's going to say, I'm getting out of here. Pops, Dark Rip, will he get out in time? He won't. He played to the face, Saxon jumps Ooh. over the Echo. It does catch the board. The Fissure out as well. They've killed off Miracle. Sumail in with the silence onto one of Weeha's Meepo. Thompson swaps over. They're focusing down Weeha. Are they going to be able to get him? He's getting low. He's trying to get the Meepo out of there. Thompson, one more magic missile. Wave of Terror. Thompson, they get the kill. Weeha's able to bring down two of them with him. But again, it's OG. Coming out on top of these engagements, mind control left behind, blocked up by the Sprout. Thompson swaps back into range, into another magic missile. Mind control, he's, he's going to go as well. OG, they are making it work here. The Thompson Venge, these constant swaps just allowing Radiant's him to be in perfect tower, position to beat down Radiant on it with whichever target they need to prioritize. And they're actually doing it here, OG. Yep, that uh, socks had just annihilated fought. Miracle. He just disappears before the fight even starts. They had to commit so much to actually kill mid one because he's, I mean, he's pretty tanky with this. He also has this dragon skill that makes him even tankier on top of it. And they had to expend so much that, yeah, OG ends up getting a, a perfect setup there. Even though the Hand of God and the mech was used, they had the damage to dish right through it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. That's pretty spectacular. I mean, now Topson, the, he's level 18. He already had the Manta. We mentioned that butterfly that he wants to go for. But now Topson, pretty deep position. I don't think he's, he's not going to be able to swap himself out of this situation. As Nigma will punish Topson for farming out and alone over by Nigma's Ancients. Now looking over to the mid. Mid roll. He's going to go for this. Leads him with the remnant chains. With one, no dark crest available for 25 seconds. Weehaz looking for the follow up net. Won't find the initial connection, but I don't think it will matter as the rest of the Meepos are moved in. The defensive nightmares tried to be offered up by No Tail, but it isn't going to save Mid one as Nigma. They're not done. Another chains on to No Tail. They'll move over and chase down a third. Double kill for Weehaz. Nigma can push in and start looking for some of these tier twos down bottom with the illusion. Thompson's trying to keep at least this bottom Radiant's wave shoved bottom out against Nigma. Well, he can push this tower with the illusion. They've even got a glyph, force a reaction out from GH. He is X to come back into the fight if they do need him. But yeah, you see OG immediately. They have three heroes dead. They don't want nothing to do with that mid lane. Push top, push bottom. I mean, Thompson's continuing to farm even when he's dead. That, that's the power of the core Venge. And, and as you say, we saw how much damage it was doing to the tower there before this butterfly. Is, uh, is, is out once that is there you know, with the extra stats and, and punch this illusion is going to start doing a, a whole lot of work even when tops is you know out cold he's he's gonna be really strong when he does get this butterfly yeah Dyer, i mean already we're seeing them being able to to focus Radiant's down one of the meepos and kill we are in the team fights 
They're chasing forward here too now. Did they actually find anybody though? Not quite able. But a smoke, they want to. Radiant they see GH for a second, but they want to go for a bigger target at the moment. They can find Weeha has the Silver Edge complete. They know that ward is there. They see it with the sentry. They're bypassing it. I'm going to get some vision over here on the other side. No tell. He saw them for a moment. I've got another question for your fault. If we are breaks the, the Underlord, I would Dyer's imagine it, it would remove the bonus attack. entirely from the, the whole team right whilst he's broken. Like it should. Well, whether it does. No, it, sh it should, but if it does, it's, it's uh, we passive. don't know. Like, it's, it's yeah, a it, it should, though. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Thompson. They got the high ground. He's stepping in. They've got the setup. There's the roof holding him in the, into the boat. Ooh, the sweep. Will o' Wisp. We are trying to lead in. Thompson swamps out. No tail to the side. Will o' Wisp continues to pull him in. Spell pots the BKB. Focuses down. The Ignis Vasus will be able to take it out. Turns with the Sprout Control onto Kuro. Into the Fiend Screen. They've got the control onto this Chen. Chen will go down. Mind Control is trying to come in for the side as well as We are looking to take down the supports first. He's onto No Tail. Chains on the side. Miracle holds back. Both sacks are in mid one. Mid one. Throwing the firestorm we are getting oh, we. as mid one steps in they'll be able to get the kill and now what more can they get gh has been chased by mid one and saxa over they go they'll get another again og they're winning these team fights and saxa echo slammed the floor by the way during that fight and they were still able to successfully do so he got hit by a blinding light, Radiant's I believe, in the back lines when he was trying to blink in an echo onto the Ember. Dude, I'm, I'm look, I think he's getting the bonus from each of the Meepos, right? Look what he's got. He's got 205 right now. What happened? No, no, no. He no, wait, way can't. More. He would have way more damage than that. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, I think. Like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be giving the, all the Meepos, so. Oh, gee, they're getting more kills. Now Kuroki too. It steps they outside of the base. That was the second time now too. And Kuroki in the first fight, he's the majority of their sustain. And because of that Fiend's Grip, there was no Hand of God. There was no mech. They were able to just focus fire on these targets. This strategy is starting to really work out for OG. Yeah. And regardless of where he's getting the damage from it, he's a lot of damage. He's walking around with 240. That's, a, that's plus 120 for everyone on the team. Uh, yeah, this vent and this nature's profit are hitting yeah. incredibly hard. And they're picking up bigger items to make Radiant's themselves even do more damage. I believe Butterfly is finished. I think that's a full AC for Sumail, too, in a sec. Oh, no, sorry, it's just yeah. the Hyperstone. I was going to say a full AC, well, oh my god. Say, yeah, I thought yeah. already. <laughs> but, <laughs> just the Hyperstone. But yeah, that's all they need is just some attack speed to benefit. And now they have a Vlad's as well. Oh, it's, it's coming together. It is. It really is. This whole strat. OG style. You know, Agnil's first on the Underlord, and the, the, they're punching there. They're able to beat down the Meepo and the rest of Enigma's team pretty easily in these 5v5s. Over they go. They have found themselves Kuro. Let's see if they can get more jump over on a Miracle. They have to grab with the Fiend's Grip. That's Miracle dead and gone for 50. Oh my god, they're really starting to take over. Damn, it's a 4k lead. And it, it, this, this is a lead that's growing at an incredible rate. And look at that pushing. Look at the damage right now on this Underlord. Thompson's hitting for almost 400 damage. No, they're, they're, all, they're all getting plus, like, basically plus 100 damage. Plus 100 damage to the whole squad. Good jump forward, Saxon. Oh, he's even poking here, trying to see if he can get a catch. They will turn on him with the X-Mark combo. The uncontrolled steps forward. I'm gonna try and have a fight here, but the Sprout's out. Sykes as well, Mind Control, he's just dying. He's gotta get saved, he will be forced out and will live for now. They do have the root control onto Sykes, are giving them the vision. So kill him oh, off. Oh, no. we are. He's being punched, he will use the E-Blade to save himself. Mid one's still trying to step forward, turns around with the pit. He's caught Meepo in it, we are, he cannot run. He's trying to escape, but the silence is out and Meepo will fall. As oh this game, oh, they've done it. They're doing it. They're, they are absolutely doing it. It's an 8k lead for OG. What's the top of damage? Miracle's dead again. I oh mean, everyone's just got so much right click because of this agony. Plus 150 at the moment. Oh. And now we are. Radiant Love that. Uh, that's game. Oh, it, I mean, it, it, it is. It's oh, GG. GG. It's a series over. Mib one and his agonims. Never before seen, honestly, has it never ever seen an Underlord rush in Ags 
but it was the perfect answer. It just gave them so much damage. There, were, there really was. There was no other item that he could have got that would have had that much impact, without a doubt. You saw in those last fights, he's getting plus 200 easily. Oh, on the old Atrophy, or I did see as well to confirm it definitely did only give one bonus from the Meepo. Okay. But it didn't matter, because he's still getting so much.